Madison second goal, right? It's literally because City couldn't clear the ball. Mm. They just couldn't get it out of like their, their, their third. Like, it just cannot go out. Then I'm like, I guess Spurs press well, but they're not the greatest pressing team ever, right? And it's not like City cannot get out of a press. Exactly. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Football Kaki. I'm your host, Elder, and I'm joined by my fellow Kaki, bro, Paul. Paul, how are you doing, bro? I'm doing good, brother. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, beaming with happiness at the fact that City lost five in a row. And we are ahead of them in one particular stat line, but I will not get into that. So, bro, how have you been? I'm doing well. As you can see, I'm doing quite fantastic. <laughs> I'm in the... Da, 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 da. <laughs> Max, yeah, so uh, four-time world champion, sir, in the second fastest car, maybe even third fastest car. Second fastest car, I second would say fastest it's second car. fastest car, because I okay. do think that Lando, Lando, and McLaren have a faster car. I think Ferrari is dependent on track whether they are fast, but I do think Ferrari it's not consistent the, throughout the season. Not consistent throughout the thing. So I, I feel that Ferrari have like maybe the third fastest car. Is it safe to say, right? If I was to ask you as a fan, right? Like, Verstappen only had the fastest car for, like, five races. Yeah, literally. <laughs> From Lando's side, right, he said that um, by the time the five races was over, the deficit was too big for him to catch. Because he dominated every single race. McLaren didn't really, like, they didn't get into the groove until a bit too late already. And I... Maybe Sing- before, slightly before Singapore. Correct. Eh, Austria and I, at that time. Yeah, and I also do think that the, the biggest issue, right, was the fact that Lando cannot convert pole. It's the same problem that Leclerc had in, in 2022. As Why it, is that? Uh? It's just huh? the pressure. Uh? No, it's um, it's a very weird thing because like, I do think that in certain tracks, right, pole doesn't pole is actually uh, the wrong side on the track to be on. Yes. But I also feel that the biggest difference is that with, between Charles and Max, right, was because when they had the Charles thing, right, Max had the best car on the track when he was fighting Ferrari at that time. Lando has the best counter track, but just that his starts are always so bad that by the time he gets to the first corner, he loses two or three places. Whereas like the one with Max and Charles was literally because of the fact that the car over time, right, was better for Red Bull, whereas Ferrari had reliability issue. Yeah, but okay, I, I, let me just ask you another thing. Right? So with this win in Vegas, right, what a place yep. to win it actually. So um, that makes Max a four-time world champion. Very similar yep. to uh, my favorite driver in the same team. Yep. Okay, so, uh, but the only difference is, right, when it was in Vettel's time, the following year, he had a very, like, bad car because of the regulation change. But then, next year, the only difference that changed, right, is that there's no Adrian Newey. Yeah. So, is it safe to say, right, that if Verstappen don't challenge for the title, at least, then will, will, it, will it cause him to turn ice, you know, for 26? What do you mean by turn ice? Like, maybe... Because in, he has a contract, what? He, in his yeah. clause, right? If that, as long as there's no, uh, if one person out of Christian Horner, Adrian Newey, or Helmut Marco leave, right? He can leave also. Technically, one left already. Right? Yeah, one left. So basically, anytime he wants to leave, he can leave. I, I'm just saying, like, all in all, if you think he don't challenge for the title next year, will he leave the following year? But where can he go? Because. I don't know. Okay. Maybe you'll free up somewhere. Okay, because I, I, I look at it this way. Lando and Oscar have a long-term contract at McLaren. So that's kind of not going to go anyway. Bro, there's one very clear answer. He will, can follow where Adrian Newey go. But, then, but it means that you gotta, you got to kick out. you got to kick yeah, out. Uh, also, also so, uh, it's only going by a one-year contract basis. Correct. If he goes to Aston Martin, right? The problem is that whether or not he can do the same thing as Aston Martin in the new regulations, okay, maybe he got a chance. But there's no way Lance Stroll is going to it's like, if you think Checo Perez is a bad teammate, Lance Stroll is going to be worse. Uh, as you can see, right, if you can win the driver's championship without your teammate, uh, it, says, it says a lot about you as a driver. Uh. Yeah. But- uh, I just so, so happened, right? It's, I think this is the first time that a uh, world champion, right, like finishing third and below in the driver's cha- the constructors. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Aston Martin, as much as they got Adrian Newey, right, it's also going to be a challenge, lah. To me, I think next year already. But I mean, I'm excited because if let's say the second half of the season is what we're going to get for next year, right? I'm all for it. Like legit. Yeah, same. Like really, really, like, really, really. I think got six drivers can challenge for title. Eh? Six. Yeah, correct. So you got mm. the two Ferraris. You got the two McLarens. The two McLarens. Uh, the two one. Mers. The two Mers. One or two Mers, yeah. 
one or two worse and Red Bull depending on whether there's a good there's a good one. I, I really do think there's a good shot. Then plus I do think that Hamilton will with the direction Ferrari is going, I think Ferrari can have a good car next year. Based yeah, on what they yeah. see, what they done, but we've seen there. Yeah. But then again, enough of Formula One. We are a football podcast after all. Um, this week, as you can see on the title, it literally says City lose five in a row because City lost or more or less cannot trash by Spurs at the Etihad. Lah. I have a lot of things to say about this game, <laughs> which I will get into right. And this is a very key moment because on the other side of the table, Liverpool do actually go eight points clear after beating Southampton uh three two away from home at St Mary Stadium lah. And then, of course, I think the big another big highlight was that Ruben Emery officially took control of his first game as Manchester United manager at Ipswich, which by United drew 1-1. Um, we, as United fans, have some things to say about this. Uh, we won't go into detail so, so fast, right? But, bro, to begin this week, as usual, we always have our What's Going On segment. So, bro, what is going on this week in the world of football? Uh, I saw something. You know how everyone has been praising Hansi Flick? Yes. Okay, so I, I can't remember the exact stat. It was like, I think 13 games, uh, X amount of points, okay? He had the exact same stat or worse than Xavi in his first season at Barcelona. But everyone is hailing Hansi Flick as like the, you know, the prodigal son, the, the one that will come and save us. But when the way Xavi left, they treated him like a outcast, right? Yep. So I think what the, what's going on is, right, is... Does fans' pers- perspective that matter that much, or does that trumps trumps the fans' perception? Wow, this is a very good question. Eh? Yeah. So is uh, when I think about it, it's like, hey, both is. I think Xavi had a better stat, but then Hansi Flick is like everyone's like, oh, Barcelona got it right. You know what a I, what I, a manager. I, I don't know. I don't know whether is it because of the fact that it's highlighted more in the fact that. There's a a lot of cultural cultural changes at Barcelona now compared to when Xavi was there. Okay. Yeah, and I think that the spotlight is more on him also because of the fact that like Real Madrid are not doing well. So I do think that uh the contrast the direct contrast will be like another question also because it's fans perspective and a lot of promotion right because Barcelona is finally getting back to the top of the table man because they were struggling badly under Xavi man prior to that. So the question will be like. If let's say Real Madrid were not struggling as much as they are now, would the perspective of Hansi Flick be different? If Real Madrid was at the top of the table, okay, it's a bit unfair to say because Xavi in that first season now he won the Liga. Eh? I know, so it's like it's a different perception because Xavi was well loved by Barcelona fans during that first season, ma. Okay, yeah. So I I think right to add on to your to your to your Real Madrid uh, segment, right? Yeah. Is it because they are scrubbing? Uh, that, it, that it amplifies like, oh, Hansi Flick is doing a super superb job. Scrubbing, scrubbing means like they, are, they, are, they are not doing very well in La Liga. Yeah. But they are not, say, very far off also. Yeah, I think like four points only. But I think it's amplified when it's in the manner in which they lost El Clasico. Yes. Right. So I think it's very simple. In La Liga, you can win like 30 games. Yep. But if you get, you get trashed in El Clasico, you are the no, minor, you are like- you're just inferior team. Correct. So, like, <laughs> everybody's looking at that particular thing because, honestly, la, like, you cannot, tr- remember, you cannot trash 4-0, four, four right? Yeah, 4-0. You cannot trash 4-0 against your heated rivals, right? It's like... At the Bernabeu. At the Bernabeu, it's like horrible. La. It's like that time, I think, it was what, 6-1 under Mourinho? 5-0. 5-0 new camera. New camera, 5-0, right? Yeah. Then the Sergio Ramos cannot red card. I feel that for anybody at Real Madrid, right, there's only two things that they want. It's, you want a Champions League and you want to be Barcelona. Yeah, you- you can don't win the La Liga. It's you like, can don't win the La Liga. You just need to win Champions League and you need to be, be Barcelona. Then that, that's a good season. <laughs> so, like, the fact that they lost 4-0, right? Everybody's hubbing on Real Madrid. Like, it's like, wow, they're so poor. They're not good. They're struggling. And Mbappe's not playing well. Then there's a lot of questions. But then, Hansi Flick be Barcelona. Be Real Madrid for you. He's king. Yeah, yeah. If What happened if, let's say, Real Madrid won that game? Would there be a different a different question mark? If the result was different, right? Then I would think that oh, they say, oh, maybe is Hansi Flick the right man for the job? Yeah, lah. Yeah. So they get is, really four points, but Real Madrid has a game in hand. So yeah. if they win that, it'd be one point. Correct. Yeah. And they make it look like Real Madrid is a lot worse than Barcelona. It's only just because, right, Mbappe is not scoring. Correct. <laughs> so so the question becomes, right, I, would it be fans' perspective, stats' perspective, or is it media perspective? In this time and era, right, media, media, media perspective yeah. is the, the one that trumps it all. Right? I agree. So, so it's, very, it's, very, it's very difficult, la, but wow, your question, uh, teammate, bro. This is a, I, I was, think this is yeah, a, I, I was thinking about it like, on the way home like 
don't make sense, ah, you know, like why is it like certain why is it double standards for somebody? Yep. And then like double standards for another somebody. I I, I really do think right is at the end of the day it really is media a lot of the things influenced now is just media perspective. Lah. But in the current situation where they are, right, I think let's just see. Lah. Because at the end of the day, right, after 38 games, lah, who finishes on top is the one that decides whether Hansi was a good or bad one. Lah. Yep. Yeah, because they're not running away the league. Right? They're not running away the league. Yes. That, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. So, with that, let's head into our main segment, which of course begins with Manchester City losing 4-0 to Spurs at the Etihad. I saw this thing, right? Like, there's this meme. Everybody in the in the Premier League fears Man City, but Man City fears Spurs because they just somehow cannot be Spurs. <laughs> yeah, and like can you imagine to Arsenal fans, right? Yeah. Like why you cannot do this in the last time, year? Right? Yeah, the, pre- the previous time they met, right? They met. Yeah. <laughs> why now? Why why now? Technically, it was one save that basically got them the league title, ma. It was the Ortega save, what? Yeah, but apparently they say Son did it on purpose, ah. But I don't know how at that pace you can fake, you can stage it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would think that like, Ortega saved them, the, the, <laughs> won them the title, right? But I'm shocked, eh? Like, okay, like the thing is, this one I had to, I have to bring up a few, a few things. Like, one is that this is the first time in Pep in his career that Pep loses five games in a row, first time ever. Ferguson didn't didn't do that. Ferguson never did that. I think Fergie did three at max only. Three or uh, three, yeah. Three, three at maximum. City look as bad as Man United, just that they were their guys just can attack more and know what to do with the ball. But the fact that most of the goals are were literally because City players either got pushed, couldn't clear the ball, cannot win the ball back, or cannot counter attack because they lost the ball. So like, let's say for example, let's talk about the four goals. Let's I think let's just talk about the four goals. Are. It's like Madison scores after Gavadio got pushed off by Kulczewski. Then Kulczewski like, hey, perfect ball, bro, right into the into the spacing there, right. But I don't know where's the defenders. Like there's some miscommunication. Like, you see Gundogan, he like totally let him go. Eh. Yeah. He let Madison run into the box. Then after a while, he. I think Gurren couldn't, couldn't chase. So he pointed yeah. at him. But then... If Stones you, and Walker. Yeah, yeah. But then too late really. What? Madison was like behind them, you know. So, Correct. Then the, then the second goal, right, is literally... Uh, Madison's second goal, right, is literally because City couldn't clear the ball. Hmm. They just couldn't get it out of like their, their, their third. Like, it just cannot go out. Then I'm like, I guess Spurs press well, but they're not, they're not the greatest pressing team ever, right? And it's not like City cannot get out of a press. Exactly. So it's, it's like the ball just roll pass then after that I think somehow goes to Son Son just flicks it over to Madison Madison chips it over over the goalkeeper 2-0 then the the half time right the half time Pedro Porro scores the third goal is literally because I don't know how Kulu Chelsea just dribbles past with force over three past three players I don't understand how the ball didn't get off him eh. like yeah. why you didn't tackle then they just push the ball forward <laughs> push the ball forward right then after that uh, they square to they get it back to Pedro Porro Pedro Porro just Simple smash in goal. Then the last goal was literally Brendan Johnson scores because Jack Grealish gave the ball away. I think by then at three zero it was easier for supposed to play. Already. I think Correct. even at two zero they were it's easier for them to play already. Ma. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So it's like it's very weird thing that I, I I got a few questions to ask you, but I just want to give you some some information, right? So basically, yeah, uh, um, Haller had like five clear, clear chances to score. He didn't score. Yeah. His XG right since uh, a few games ago, right, I think the Arsenal game right was expected XG. I uh, was eight. He only scored two. Then, yeah, a lot of them were like good saves from, yeah. this, from this match. But there was some where he just sky the ball. Or like he just couldn't convert. Right? That's, that's one thing. Lah. And then another thing is that in all competitions, right, City have considered 14 goals in 5 games. Eh? 14 eh, in the 5 losses that they have, right? And you know what's the worst and the weirdest stat ever? In the EPL, right? Man City have considered more goals than Man United. Yeah, because of this 4 new, lah, right? This yeah. one, one game that, that, that amplified the thing. It's, I mean like... Inflated the score. The, if, the, inflated the, the score, yes, right? But... In four, in two of the five games, right? They consider four. They consider eight goals. Eh? Yeah, lah, So uh, it is very clear that there's one main issue with missing Rodri. Uh. Yes. And the best part is right. They did an entire ceremony to unveil him before the match. <laughs> <laughs> this, and they, they did and their they Rodri with the Ballon d'Or. You know, the they say that's what you get uh, for for robbery. You know. I mean, like, I'm happy that City are, are struggling, right? But I don't understand this whole situation at all eh? like if you were to look at the past five games as a whole uh, like con- okay con- con- going back to Spurs right like Spurs beat them twice eh? like yeah, Spurs one is the EFL Cup right EFL Cup 2 uh, and then they beat them yeah because they, they use a lot of young players yeah then after that this one right was like literally full team against full team is 4-0 yep. and I would say that if you were to really look at this particular thing right like Spurs did 
what they they needed to do. They converted their chances. They did. They and they they wanted it more. City looks sloppy, and the only difference between this and and like teams that are struggling, like let's say even United, right? It's a literal fact that you won more games at the beginning. That's literally the difference. So after the Arsenal game, I think that's when everything just went off for off for them already, lah. Like. Uh. I don't know what I do. Like, how do they how do they get out of this? Uh? They still have Pep, bro. So I I do think that is like if you listen to his like recent interviews now, right? I think he's like he's sounding more and more motivated. Eh? Yeah. So you got, I think you gotta be careful a bit because if like the past few years has been just like cruising, not say cruising, uh, like comfortable for him, right? Imagine like an angry Pep. So I do think that he is like the main factor. If he leaves now, uh, is I think that we will see the we will stop we will see the end of the city's domination. Yeah. Yeah. And then we will definitely see like a new team like like maybe Liverpool Arsenal. Yeah la, Ultimately, I, I I do think in one month's time the window is open, right? They should go and get a DM. They have to lah because Roddy's got Roddy's out of the out for the season already. He's mm-hmm. done already, and it could come to a point where like like we'll talk about it later, right? It could be six losses in a row. Put, it's uh, a pos- this week, yeah, right. this week because they are playing Liverpool lah, which we'll get to later. I I don't know. I feel that with this with this uh, like. It's not something that any of us expected to see to struggle this badly. And yeah, it's like the first time in I think ever since Guardiola's first year. Eh? Yeah. Mm. I agree. And I've I've said it previously, yeah. Uh, it could have been more goals considered because the Bournemouth game literally the Bournemouth just wasted chances. It could have been yeah. could have literally been four one that game. And the fact that <laughs> City never scored never score a goal in the ATR. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. a lot of games, you know, they have not yeah, that's why. I think the last good goal they, the last time they didn't score was the zero zero draw against Arsenal. Yeah, correct. And it's, I mean, like, it's a shock uh, because nobody expected City to lose five in a row. Eh? You know, discount the EFL game because I think that one is on purpose. One. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah for game, but ultimately, on the record, it's still five in a row. Uh. Auto record is five in a row, uh, but you still lose 4 1 to, to Sporting. Uh. Yeah. And then, you lose, lose then, you, then you lose Bournemouth, then you lose 4 0 to Spurs. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what, what can I say? Uh? But speaking of Sporting Lisbon, um, I think it's time to move on to Man United to the other side of Manchester. The red side of Manchester, uh, Ruben Emery officially takes his first game as Manchester United manager uh, with a system that I think us as Man United fans and everybody around the football world expected him to play. Like. Basically, it was a 3-4-1-2 system. No, 3-4-2-1 system with Rashford at point. Uh, final score was, of course, Ipswich 1, United 1, right? United took the lead two minutes in. But after that, uh, it was same old United, same old everything. I still do think that like the difference between this and Ten Hag right, is that there is a clear system. Like it's very clear yeah. specifically you know exactly which player is supposed to do what. But even I so what, I don't know what Marcus Rocha is going to do. And I, I neither do I. Actually yeah. I also know I mean like you go from Yoko to Marcus Rashford, uh, like it just says you everything that you need <laughs> to know. The downgrades. But I mean like even so right, like if Switch honestly can win this game, like really legit can win this game. It's if it wasn't for Oh Nana, right? I think they will be. It, I think two three one up. At least two three one, and the lab wasted his chances. Yeah, he, he wasted a lot of chances. Eh? He wasted a lot, dude. People can say, okay, maybe the 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 Hutchinson goal right was lucky. It was a sick goal. Eh? It's a sick goal. It, there was a deflection, lah. But I mean, honestly, the way that he angled one, uh, that's a goal that if on a day to beat Onana, right? That was a you. It was something like that to beat Onana because I I do think that if let's say Onana hadn't. That goal hadn't gone in. I think United win 1-0 because Onana was in that goal form. Um, we did something special and they got something special. Correct. Um, for Ipswich, right, they are primed to get relegated. But for this game, they showed that they actually can knock it out with the big boys. Uh, but I think the cards lie deeper because was it a case for you where it was Ipswich playing well or United players just not understanding what's going on? I think it's a mixture of both. It's like United, they scored early, right? Yeah. But then after that, you could tell they don't know what to do really. Yeah. It's either they were confused or they were they didn't know what to do. But knowing this bunch of United players, right, they definitely know what to do. It's just that they don't know how to execute. They're just not good enough. Lah. Yeah, it's like everybody is more focused on what I'm supposed to do yep. rather than let's, let's work together as a team. It's understandable because it's a culture shock, ma, right? Yeah. Amorim is only, he only did like two training sessions with them. Yep. So everyone is more like, okay, I, I, I myself cannot make the mistake. I must, I must perform to, sh- to prove my worth to the manager. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, Dalu is like doing this, doing that. But later did he know it's like, it's not what Amorim wants. So that's yeah. why he called certain players out in the press conference. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel that 
it switch capitalized lah. Like they know United is undergoing some transition, right? Yeah. So and they score one goal, right? They could have pushed, easily pushed for the win. And yeah. they would definitely have gotten it. Lah. I agree. And I was watching this, I think one of the pundits they said that you could see there's a difference between the two teams. It's like one team knows exactly what to do where they don't have to look up to find the other player. It's like there's a system already. Whereas the another team is just trying to figure out the system. Yeah. And like for me, the changes that he made were I feel they were good changes. I just don't I just the, the one I I didn't agree with was basically he put on he put on uh Ugate for Casemiro instead of Eric, instead of Ericsson. It's true having Ericsson that that came, that came off. Yeah, so I do I, I do feel that it's like he wants a ball playing midfielder, which is yep. Ericsson. Yes. But he clearly has no more legs in him, you know. Yep. So yeah. Uh I can't remember the exact midfielder he used in sporting. It's definitely one destroyer, one midfielder. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I disagree with the starting line actually with the Ericsson one. Yeah. Because we it's a, it's a little bit of a like, headache to us like why? Why Ericsson? Ericsson is clearly not like starting worthy anymore, you know. Yeah. It's like, only the fact that I can I can sort of like agree is because the rest of them just came back from international. Yes. Yeah, Ericsson's the only one that like did two full sessions. Casmino did a full session. Rashford is right. Yep. Yeah, so a lot of it now is like the players that did full sessions with him. Still too early to say, but if there's a repeated pattern, right, that is clearly the player actually. Yeah. How are you going to blame someone who just came in like one week ago? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But then, but then people are always comparing like, okay, like it's root, like it's root Venisteroy and everything and that, right? He could have done something. But I feel that like, the the players knew that he's going to be, not going to be there after a few games already, man. Yeah, but Root never asked them to play three at the back all this, man. Correct. Know? Yeah. Correct. So Root, Root, this place. Like, okay, y'all just play yourself. Win Kennedy. Okay. Technically, it's still player power. I think this is the first time that all the players understand, right? okay, this is a, this is managerial power already. Yeah. Like, no matter what you do, right, my system is my system. This is how it's going to be. We are yeah. playing three at the back. We are playing two midfielders holding. Wing backs, you run back and you transit out. And attackers, you, you have to press. If not, you all have to run back. Like, okay. you can see, like, there's a shape whereby the moment the ball goes like all the United players all run back into their own half. But the problem is uh, the defenders are not how to say uh, they are not covering Shock. the they are yeah. not the, covering the area side. They're kind of playing like a back four or a back five instead of a back three. It's what they're familiar with. Ma, yeah. And then also like there's a good thing that he calls them out. La. Like even Bruno he knows that Bruno always want to play the long ball right? like what yeah. he says. So it's clearly that's a clear issue to him. And then another thing that he mentioned was the decision making. Yeah. Horrendous. I think very bad decision making. Like even yeah. Ganacho, I think two times he could run he ran, ran, ran into space, right? He could have easily passed to the open guy. Yep. Like Rashford. He, I think that one he that, that one run that he ran, he should have passed to Rashford. Lah, I feel he, he should have passed to Rashford, but he the problem with Ghana is that he always runs with his head down. Hmm. He doesn't look... Yeah, by the time he look up too late right? By the time he look up too late already. And it's more or less like... If Switch, they wanted it. Because they knew that they could beat Man United. Can you imagine, right? If Switch down thinks you can beat Man United. Eh? Yeah. I, that's the beauty of the AP. Oh. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, I'm not going to discredit if Switch on this. Because if Switch, if Switch they really play very well. I'm going to give Emery benefit of doubt here, right? But clearly that is a... There is a player problem now because honestly, Diogo Dalo will say a lot of times he's just not good enough. Marcus Rashford is, bro. I, I don't I'm see what he is in this system. Time, I'm gonna say this one time on the channel. Uh. I think uh, he really got this. He has a hidden clause in the contract. Let's say how many times he had to play. He had to play no, specific number games. At, like sixty minutes per game. If you notice, ah, uh, him, uh, Ten Hag, Root, Benistore, and Emery, uh, always play him at sixty minutes. Eh. If you have to have that in your contract, I think you shouldn't be playing for me. Yeah. I agree. It just shows that you are fearful eh, of yep. being dropped. Yep. You know? Yeah. <sighs> and then uh I feel that Anthony or this can go. Uh, really, really. There's no space for them in this in this team. Yep. There isn't there isn't. Uh. I also don't know whether or not, right, like Ahmad should be wing back or he should be he should be attacking camp. Bro, if Ahmad can convert into a wing back in two sessions, can you imagine un- under one full season under Amorim? I think in two sessions, back. you can play one, you can convert into a right wing back. Eh? Yeah. Then why Rob Marcus Rocha cannot? Yep. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, I, I think, right, like, let's just, let's just give Emery benefit of doubt, right? But I, I want to see, like, a team whereby, like, we said it yesterday, lah, that midfield is going to be Mainu and Ugate. 100% one. 
like Ugarte is going to be the destroyer. My new is going to be the creative, like the midfield, like Maestro, right? Then he can get it to Bruno. Bruno can do all the creative things at the front. Then you just need another, uh, the other camp to be like a second striker, which I think likelihood is going to be Mason Mount. So I also don't know where, where Ganacho fits in this lineup also. Convert into right wing back or, or left wing back. Or. Left wing back, or. but mm. I think Harry and Mas is better at left wing back. Dalo should just go. So, um, United, I think they have a they have a Europa League game in the middle of the week. Yeah, they are playing Bodo Glint like in the in in midweek during the yeah I Old Trafford. Uh, then, after uh, this one, then after they're playing uh, Everton on Sunday at Old Trafford. So I would probably just give him bene- give them give Emerin benefit of the doubt. I hope that he actually gets a full squad to be able to play under him lah. I would say that probably they should win the Europa League game, but I'm just gonna keep quiet. Uh, because I cannot get my host as a United fan. Um, moving on to the red side of Merseyside, uh, Liverpool officially go eight points clear of Manchester City with a three-two victory at Southampton. This game, I think, to sum it up, right was the goals considered were just unnecessary. <laughs> it's like just not needed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, like the first goal from Southampton, wow, bro! That goal that Sabah has scored just was just bad from it's Southampton. Scored. Yeah, it's man. just bad from Southampton. Do. I don't, I don't know what they're doing it. Legit, cha- championship football. It's really championship level kind of football. Wow, it's like oh my goodness, it's so like it's so disheartening to watch. Eh. <laughs> not like me. it's just he just passed he the ball back to Sabah's side. Then um after that, I don't know lah. I question new, right? again. They went two new up first, right? Is it? Was it two new? Up? Oh, no, 2-1, two 2-1. No, they went 2-1. Yeah, yeah they, they, they went, the supporter score. Then after that, um, um, Armstrong. Armstrong score, right? Okay, question. Was it a penalty? Because the contact happened outside the box. I don't know, bro. To me, I maybe, I, I would say, I would lean more towards no. La. It's, to me, it's, that's why, I, that's the thing that I don't understand. It's like, if contact happened outside the box, right, shouldn't it have been at the spot of the contact rather than the spot of the ball? I have no idea, bro. <laughs> But maybe it was on the line. Because if it's on the line, then it's a pen. Ma. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so my my whole thing is that if the initial contact happens outside the box, right? And from what I understand, right, it's a penalty should only have be a penalty once it's inside the box. Yep. So no, on the it, line. On the on line, line outside penalty, the box. Ma. On the line, it's penalty, bro. But his contact is outside the box. Eh? Yeah, yeah I say, I'm, I'm telling you the rule. If it's on the okay. line, it's a penalty. Yeah. Okay, but if contact is outside the box, then it should be a free kick. Right? So why is it a penalty? Yeah, so I think when they use VAR or this, right, you cannot give free kick. Huh? Yeah, when you VAR, right, I don't think you can use you can give free kick. Eh. If they, but you can say no play, penalty. If play, had, if play had continued. Yeah, no penalty, then they continue playing from where the ball left off. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it was a free kick. Eh. Or unless referee blow for penalty, right, then they check, then it's free kick, then they'll give free kick. Eh. We are just ruining the game, right? Then Fernandez scores for Southampton, right? I think this is goal just poor defending from Liverpool. Like, like when I say it's unnecessary, this is unnecessary. Mm. Like, it's, it's just like, they all swam to the ball. It's three defenders against one player. Eh? <laughs> like, like schoolboy stuff. Yeah, it's like three defenders to one player then just run. Then, uh, they just call, call then Fernandez scores. Ah. But Salah's first goal was, wow, that was a good goal. Salah, yeah, I saw that. A ball over the top, right? He just he didn't even do anything. He just he just to tap to touch the ball, then the ball just rolled into it. Typical Salah goal. Like it's a good goal. Then of course, um, Liverpool get a penalty. Salah converts. The win puts Liverpool eight points clear at the top, lah. Like I mean, expectations wise, Liverpool should have won this game, right? But I do yep. think that is there is still kinks. Like the two goals that they cost is legit unnecessary, right? Yeah, it was just a, like mini scare, you know. Yeah. Because it, it, ultimately, you look at the result ma, right, of the game. They won, they 8 points clear. Away from home, I think. Yeah, they still can, they come, they still technically the best defensive record in the league. Yeah, and like, I think Ani Slot, the fastest, one of the top three managers to reach 10 wins. Yeah, dude, 10 wins, 1 draw, 1 loss, 24 goals scored, 8 goals conceded. Bro, 10 wins uh, is like Ancelotti first year at Chelsea level. <laughs> yeah, level, dude. You know? yeah. yeah, dude. Like even I don't think Ferguson also never win ten so fast. You no, know? no. Usually it takes a while. One. I remember, I remember our most successful season. We all start super slow. One. <laughs> yeah, what draw? <laughs> draw two, win one. <laughs> then was, oh, uh, there was one the O eight O nine. Is it O seven O eight? Yeah, O seven O eight. Five games. One new, one new, one, one new, new, one new, one new. <laughs> Is their title to lose? Honestly, depends because now right, like Arsenal lost a few games, right? But they are still 
the same as Man City now. Eh? So yeah. whatever advantage Man City had, right, is gone. It's how these two can work together to stop Liverpool. Eh? Yeah. And their next round of games is kind of like 50-50. Okay, so they start with City, which we're going to talk about next. Eh? So City, Newcastle, then it's Everton, Fulham, Spurs. Mm. This is EPL. Lah. So they, their next few round of games is like not the easiest in terms of because I do think that Newcastle Everton right yeah. Newcastle Everton Fulham also not the easiest team to play against also. Mm. so I think it's going to be interesting right? but let's move on to our match of the week which of course brings us to the top of the table clash between Liverpool and of course Manchester City at Anfield if City lose this game they could fall easily to 5th position depending on whether Arsenal Brighton and Chelsea win <laughs> and Literally, uh, Liverpool could go as far as nine points clear of second of like Chelsea if Chelsea win their game. Lah. Which begs the question: Is good? Is this really going to be something that City is probably going to activate, or you think that it's going to be a Liverpool win, or do you think Liverpool are, are a lot more superior than City at the moment in time that Liverpool's going to win? You just look at the goals considered, both teams. One team considered eight. One team yeah. considered seventeen. Best best defensive record in the league. Even if they don't win, right, it's Liverpool, uh, they will not lose. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't win, it's fine. They won't, they, won't, you, yeah, they, you, won't they also won't lose also. Yeah, that's I, like, I, like Jordan was, he was saying, I pray he hoping for a draw, right? Because Jordan's yeah. an Arsenal fan. Right? Yeah. If they draw, right, then it's, uh, and Arsenal win, right, it's, six, it's about seven points. Yeah. So Arsenal it's, still seven. A very, it's still a super big gap. Man. It's still a big gap, dude. It's still a very big gap. Can you imagine going, okay, let's say if they, let's say Liverpool win, right? Yeah. You're going eleven points ahead, ah, even yeah. before the like the schedule that you are supposed to fail on. Eh? Yeah, the Christmas schedule, right? Yeah, dude. So you I'm have like, eleven points buffer to play around. Eh? You can literally lose three considering games. Considering City win all their games in the busy period. Correct. You can win. You can literally lose three games and you will still be the other table. The four, uh, four, four then cannot lah, right? Yeah lah. You can, no, actually you can still lose like technically two games and draw two, then you will still be the other table. Hmm. So I mean, I I don't know lah, like. I, I, I think we should just get to the predictions right? because the we've talked about City and Liverpool and City and Aussie already, right? Um what's your score what's your score line? I say draw. <laughs> <laughs> I say uh I say one one. Yeah. One one. Uh. Okay. With me, I I I think right Liverpool's gonna win. I'm gonna go uh Liverpool two City zero. I, I, I just don't see City like yeah, nah dude. They definitely have to bounce back. So just when only, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I, 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 I'm guessing that a draw we consider a start of sort, like uh, they are bouncing back maybe. Yeah, yeah. So uh, official predictions, of course, is Paul says it's a one-one draw, right? Yes. One-one draw, and I do think that Liverpool's gonna win two-zero. So we have come to the end of this week's episode of the Football Kaki, bro. Before, before we go, you got anything else to add? I think, yeah, la, The rest of the league need to buck up, la. If okay. not, uh, it's gonna Liverpool is it's gonna be a farmer's league. Yeah. Hey, but I saw something very funny, yeah. You know Thanos and the every just like everything is perfectly balanced, right? Yeah. The I saw a meme, right? Just everything is perfectly balanced. Man United, 12th position. Four wins, four draw, four loss, 13 goals scored, 13 goals conceded, 60 <laughs> points. <laughs> N- neutral goal defense. Right? <laughs> neutral goal defense. Uh, 4 4 4 13 13 0 16. <laughs> perfectly balanced. Perfect, everything perfectly balanced. They just the Thanos. So they just the main. Perfectly the balanced table. as all things should be. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's it for this week's episode of the Football Kaki. All right. So that is it for this week's episode of the Football Kaki. Brought to you by the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. Now, for those of you who are tuning in, we just want to say thank you. And we hope that you continue to support our other shows, which of course are the Copy Bros. Every Monday, we talk about fun and trivial topics. And then, of course, if you enjoy game shows, we do have the SG Draft podcast every friday uh involving everybody from the chit chatter podcast crew uh we come in and draft about different topics we've done food we've done everything last week was of course the logos draft we do have an interesting draft for you this week uh, so do keep a look out for that so from me and paul we just want to say thank you and if you have not subscribed to the channel please do so and if you have just want to say thank you and we hope that you continue to recommend the channel to your friends so that we can continue to produce great content for you so from everybody here at the football Kaki, we just want to say thank you have a great week ahead Man United is perfectly balanced, but not in the way that we want it to be. Um, we uh, have a great week ahead, and of course, uh, look forward to the big game between Liverpool and of course Manchester City this weekend. So, bro, anything else to add? United will win, They just need to win. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, for all Man United fans, uh, 
be patient. It's coming soon. So, see you soon. Bye-bye.